EVAP, Pressure Vacuum Decay. We kept the pressure in because the abbreviations for this system is EPVD. And since we want to explain all those strange acronyms, we normally refer to this as Vacuum Decay. It's just simply what it is. It's widely used in 2000 to 2004 time frame. And this was to address the requirement for having to measure 20,000 leak. Now remember, measuring 20,000 leak is difficult. It takes a lot of work. And some natural vacuum systems trying to prove upon that, they're going to use the same components with different software improvements to do it with the engine off. But vacuum decay is widely used by both imports and domestics before 2004. Now, some will continue to use it after 2004. There's nothing that says you can't use it, but the natural vacuum had some improvements. But the main drawback to vacuum decay was a four to six hour wait after engine shutdown before the monitor can run. Remember, we're having to do this because we're putting a vacuum on a fuel tank that has warm fuel in it. Warm fuel evaporates faster than cold fuel. So the timing has to change. Let's talk about that timing. What we're going to do is the vent is going to close for the first time. Remember, up to this point here, before we got the leak check, the only job the vent solenoid had was to stay open and not interfere with purge. Now we're going to close it, block it off, so when we open up the purge solenoid, we can capture a vacuum, our six to uh, nine inches we need. And what the PCM is going to do, it's going to time the vacuum decay. Once we capture it and close off the purge solenoid, how long does it take this vacuum to decay and go away? We're going to use the fuel tank pressure monitor, our sensor, to watch this and monitor the operation of fuel tank pressure. Here is a pattern. This happens to be a GM, started off about 150. The red scale is inches of water, H2O, and we're going to walk through each phase. There's a half a dozen tests being run here, which brings up something. People say, what is mode 6 all about? Why do you weird guys focus on mode 6? Mode 6 records all of the spots you see a red line. So we have six mode 6 recording points made for this one test. Mode 6 was required by California Air Resources Board and EPA to be made available to technicians because it shows how the test results are and what's being done to run the EVAP codes. Let me say that again. Mode 6 is where the manufacturers are required to store and display to technicians the test results of all the tests being run in order to drive the check engine light or the failure codes for EVAP. Now it's not just EVAP, it also does a number of other sensors. Here we're focusing on EVAP. What most people have a problem with in Mode 6 is understanding what EVAP Mode 6 is telling them. So we're going to bring Mode 6 in and talk about this. But let's talk about what's happening here. We're going to close the vent and do nothing for a while. We're going to tell you what's happening. First, if we close the vent and close the purge, nothing is happening. We have no vacuum applied. We have no venting. If for some reason the purge solenoid is not sealing, we will increase vacuum and it'll start going up. Remember, in this case, up is vacuum, down is pressure. And we can get pressure. Notice this little bump down here. Pressure will increase if the fuel is warm and we have rough roads, it'll be expanding. So this gives us a preview of how much it's expanding. Now we did a couple things when we started this. We set the value for the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage and calibrated that to be zero inches. And now the inch scale comes into play and everything is done with the inch scale. So once we're sure we're not building pressure and we're not creating vacuum, we pass the first part of the test and we will store that and have our test results for that. Here's the test result. This is off of GM. This is test ID 3D and component ID C4. So it stores these results and says, hey, the EV PD, remember we told you that was the, the version reducing the purge test passed. Uh, the second one, purge veil, vacuum test failed. So did the purge work? 
Did we start building a vacuum? We start building a vacuum. There's the vacuum test. Start building a pressure. There's the pressure test. Now, unless someone tells you this, this is might as well be written in Chinese because if you don't know what the purge pass test is or the purge back test is, you have no idea what's talking about. So here's the example of how we're going to straighten out mode six. Some mode six is ugly. This is an example. It happens to be a Honda. And it happens to be testing the same thing we're testing. Purge flow and evap canister purge check valve, blah, blah, blah. What's, the same, what's it going to set? It's going to use a failure judgment. It's going to measure it and make a decision and set a code. Uh, it's not up to us. It doesn't share anything with us. We, got a, we had other things that tell us what's going on. So here's some examples. This is a, each manufacturer has a list of the PIDs and modes. This is Ford. Uh, monitor 3D and 84 are specifications and test results. All zeros indicate the monitor has not run since the battery was reconnected. This is a new police car. Just came out of the paint shop, 2014, and here's what we have. We have vapor blocking valve performance. That's our canister purge. It shows us the value on the right, the maximum spec, and the minimum spec. So we have specifications right here in scan tool saying this is the lowest it can read, this is the highest it can read, and the far right tells you this is what we actually tested. So here's what they wanted in California. They wanted you to know what was being listed here so you could be able to judge it and say, oh, yes, I understand. I can see I'm about to set a code. I had a, I got an intermittent check engine light. When an intermittent check engine light, you may find test results is very close to either the min or the max specification. So this is where mode 6 is used. Most people don't use mode 6 because if you didn't know what we're talking about, block EVAP system line screening test. Uh, that's another thing we're going to be doing, another test we're going to be doing, and we're going to be looking at that. So mode 6 provides the maximum, minimum specifications as they apply to the vehicle you're working on and the test results from the last time this test ran. Now let me stop right there and clarify something. The last time this test ran, remember this has some superior criteria. It is only going to run if the vehicle is set four to six hours. If inlet air temperature is close to coolant temperature at the time of startup and no more than 330 seconds have passed and we start the program. So a lot of rules go in here. If you start the car up and drive it into the service bay and start this check, you're not going to be able to see this run. The data can be looking it's old. You can fix anything you want to, start the car back up and look at it. Until late afternoon, it's not going to run this test again. So this test will not be updated. This is not live data. This is the test results the last time this test ran. Give you an example of, of things that make sense to you. Work a lot with the Navy in military bases where we have speed limits of 20, 25 miles an hour on base. We have vehicles that have had battery changes that have never checked the catalytic converter because the vehicles are never taken on the highway. They never run, and your test results may be years old of what's in there. Uh, they may, we, if we have one that has run, it's the time when they pull the, the new vehicle off the truck, deliver it to the Navy base, and certain tests have not run. Now, the EVAP will run, but the canister, uh, the uh, catalytic converter test will not run. So if we see a reading, that's the reading of the day the car was delivered on base because it's never had a chance to do that test. I say that because I want you to understand this is not live data. But the strength of Mode 6 is that the monitor testing is performed under PCM control conditions, which makes them very accurate. Let me say that again. These test results are run under control conditions as monitored and operated by the PCM software, so they are very accurate, more accurate than what you can do in a shop. Now, these test results are used to run the mill and the trouble code. So this is if you've got a trouble code, the source of it, the reason it failed is it failed some Mode 6 test results, add them all up. No one test results in Mode 6 will light the engine light all by itself usually. Uh, now, we've shown you some difference in how different manufacturers work. We're going to use Ford IDS. 
in this instructional video because we're working on 2014 cars for this program and we had nothing else to use. Don't assume that all scan tools display this much information on the screen. They don't. Many of them display one at a time. So let's move to the next phase. We have done one thing so far. We've had both intake, uh, the, the purge, and the vent closed. We watched for pressure and vacuum. Now we're going to leave the vent closed and we're going to open the purge solenoid until we increase it. So the purge solenoid is open to build our six to nine inch vacuum in the EVAP system. That's a test in itself. Can we reach six to nine inches? Well, the first thing you might say, well, I've got a 20 inch manifold vacuum. Surely we can. Well, this is small. The, the vent solenoid has some restrictions in it, so it doesn't it slows the vacuum down. Remember, we don't want to put 20 inches of vacuum on here. We'd crush the fuel tank. So it applies it slowly. If we have a big leak, like the gas cap off, we would not be able to reach our 6 to 9 inch vacuum. Let me say that again. If we had a big leak, like a broken hose, cracked hose, something really large, the term in OB, OBD2 generic versions is gross leak. If we had a gross leak, we would not be able to build this 6 to 9 inch vacuum. So, can we go up? Can it go up fast enough? Well, if it goes up too fast, we've got a blocked line. Now, we just saw some scan, scan data that said, hey, if it just goes straight up and not at an angle, we're not pulling a vacuum on a system. We're pulling on a kinked hose. So, here's our blocked line. Here's our, scan, here's our data in the IDS saying, hey, we stored this test result because as soon as we opened the EVAP, uh, purge solenoid, the pressure went straight up real quick, and we've got again a min and a max and a test result. So here's what you've got. You can see exactly how close you are to failing. If you think you've got a kink line, you can see it right here. You see what the advantage is of coming and looking at this data in mode 6? I wished all scan tools showed it in this format. Do not, I'm going to read my lips, you hear what I'm saying? Write it in your eyeballs so when you close your eyes you can see it. Not all scan tools are going to show you the information this clear. A lot of them show you one piece at a time. It looks a lot more confusing. But that was Ford's next test is for mode 6 weak vacuum test. The weak vacuum test is can we reach this 6 to 9 inches of water during our opening to try to build it up. If we can't, we have a gross leak. Mode 6 shows test results for gross leak. And this is the data during your initial diagnostic to look at. Remember, it may be difficult to get this test to run if the vehicle is not shut down four to six hours. This is going to be old, old information. Don't make a repair and expect this is going to show it up until tomorrow. Let me say it again. Now, this is a 2014. It would show it up because it's got some improvements. But here's our monitor, large leak, excessive vacuum limit. Did we build vacuum too fast? Did we have a gross leak? All these tests are taking those individual pieces we've been looking at in that chart and telling us what the results were in that chart were. So we've done just three things so far. Opened the purge solenoid after they both were closed, closed it up again when we got to six to nine inch of vacuum. Once we close it, we're going to seal the EVAP system, allow the regions to stabilize. Many manufacturers say this is a phase XYZ for stabilization. And we said before, a large leak, we're not even going to be able to get here. So then we're going to start reading. After we stabilized, we're going to take our reading. So we've passed our stabilization period. We're seeing how things are. We start our clock. How long we're going to time it to the second reading depends on the temperature of the fuel because fuel temperature changes. A 40,000 leak will cause vacuum decay to be higher vacuum decay rate than 20,000. Vacuum decay rate means it's losing vacuum faster. A 40,000th loses vacuum faster than a 20,000th. Okay, it's a vacuum decay. How fast is it going down? Now, this test is done in the service bay with scan tools that support bidirectional tests in 2007 and later. We can do this test anytime. 40,000th will be done on all vehicles whether they have natural vacuum or not. So here's what it says. Monitor, 40 thousandths. Cruise leak check, vacuum bleed up, maximum 40 thousandths leak. Gives us our minimum, our maximum, and our test value. Again, the value of mode 6. So now we're out here taking our second reading. 
we record this final reading and say, you either passed or failed. And we've talked about that before. But then we're going to do something else. Then we're going to slow down. We're going to open the vent and time how quickly the vacuum bleeds off. How fast is the rate of vacuum decay? Notice the chart shows it goes down pretty quick. If we have restriction, this will go down slower and we have restricted system. 